Hello there. Welcome to a follow-up presentation on the previous presentation which we had on um, the concept of a function. And we saw there what we could do to function like composing functions. We now know about identity functions, what it means to have an index of a function. So now we're going to look at the uh, different types of uh, functions of one variable. So let's start uh, this way. The first type of function we're going to look at is um, what we call a constant function. By a constant function, we mean, for example, a uh, function that we say is y to call f of x equals to a, a being a constant a real number. For example, we can have y is equals to f of x equals to 5. What does this mean? This means that for any value of x in the domain of um, f, the output of uh, this function will always be, be 5. Like for example, let's say one square unit here is uh, 1, uh, one square here is 1 unit. So in this case, if we've got 1 there and 2 there, 3 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 there. Which means that if you value this function at f at 0, the output is going to be 5. So you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that will be the output. And if we also evaluate it at minus 1, the output is going to be 5. So we have here the point there which is on the, on the graph of this function. And if we take the value of the function at let's say 3, we are going to have again 5. Which means this is a constant output Five. So graphically, this will be represented by a horizontal graph like that. So that is what we call a constant function. I would like to not uh, take your uh, call your attention on the fact that I started at zero here. You will see as a go and we're going to be sort of engaged in some kind of counting. So what is the next type of function? Our next type of function is what we call a linear function, which is of the form y is equal to or f of x is equal to ax plus b, where a and b are constant, and in this case they are real numbers. So, for example, we've seen this function before, like f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. We simply say here, our a is equal to 2, our b is equal to 1. And we know that, as it is here, our b is normally the y-intercept, that is where the line cuts the, the y-axis. That's right. So, in this case, if we've, if we've, if we've got this uh, kind uh, of function, what you should know is that uh, A, here, we call it gradient, and the normally calculated by getting two points, any two points on the line, let's say a point x1, y1, and the point x2, comma y2, to calculate a, we simply say a is equals to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. In other words, in this particular case here, our a is equals to 2, and which means then, if we write this in a in a rational form like this, that would be 2 over 1. Now, since we know that this uh, this uh, function has the y-axis at 0, 1, in other words, uh, the point 0, 1 is a point of intersection of the line with the y-axis, which we can put here as follows there. And then, this is what we call our gradient. So to plot this kind of line, what do you do? This uh, denominator gives you what you run horizontally and uh, what you rise or uh, what you rise along the y-axis uh, y2 minus y1 it can be negative or positive if it's positive you go up if it's negative you go down then in our system this numerator is negative you go down but uh, this is a, a horizontal run so in this case we we'll run here one in this case, we move this way, 1, and then up to, it's here, 1, 2. In our there, we get some kind of a, a triangle which characterizes this line, and these two points will be on the line. Then you can roughly sketch the line as uh, follows. 
that's what that's how we can plot that that that, that line there so we've seen this example before we're just repeating here so this is what you call linear function a reminder again if for example if i'm given this expression i know that i can pick any independent uh, develop an independent variable here like let's say six and then i can calculate there says two times the six plus 1, which will give us uh, 13, which tells us that the point 6, 13 is on the line. But on the other hand, we can be given, let's say, the value of the function, let's say, the value of the function, let's say, f of x, we can be given that it is equal to, let's say, 20, and they want to find out what will be x in that way by setting a function equal to a value and we want to determine that we actually come up with the, a, an equation there let's say for example if we had this function and you have that it is equal to 20 what you just do would get 2x plus 1 equals to 20 then you get what you call a linear equation i mentioned this before that for any type of function you get you are also going to have corresponding equation so this will generate us a linear equation what we note here is that what given the value of y already we need to determine the value of x so now here we have to solve this equation for x for example let's say this function was at this level and then we want to get the value of x obviously the value of x will be read off from the x axis there so to to get this value of x there graphically we can just draw horizontally at the point of intersection you turn towards x then you can read off the value there but analytically what we do we simply take the expression of the function equate it to the value which is say the function is equal to then we solve a linear equation and what, what one thing which you must observe here this the uh, linear functions uh, the type of functions we can describe as one-to-one -one functions. What does that mean? As you can see, let's say we're looking at this uh, identity function here, which is also a linear function. We cannot, uh, what we mean by one-to-one, -one, it simply means that we cannot find two different values of x, let's say x1 and uh, x2, such that the value of the function at x1 is equal to the value of the function at um, x2, where these two are different. So if, if whenever the two values are different, we get different values here. We say the function is one to one, and that's a very important property. Now, at this point, having looked at uh, linear functions, we can look uh, next look at another function which is closely related to this. Let's look at the following function. The following function is called the absolute value function. I hope you remember when we were discussing real numbers, we talked about the absolute value. And now we are looking at this as generally the absolute value function will look like this where k h and a are real numbers so we can say a h and k are all real numbers why do i say this function is um, this function is um, related to linear functions the function is defined this way that's exactly how we define the the absolute value if you look at how we define the absolute value which is what we have here we've got two functions now is for less than uh, for um, x greater than zero we've got the function y is equals to x which is this identity function and now if we multiply this function by minus one we get a function which is y equals to minus x which will give us this this uh, blue line here so and then this in this case here 
this function is only defined for x greater or equals to 0. In other words, it will give us this part of the graph going this way. And then, if, if on the other end, we take this, find this expression whereby x is less than 0, then we take a function like this and then take, like let's say, minus 1, 2, 3, minus 3, and then according to this function, we put a minus 4 and a 3, then that will give us 3 going that way. Then we've got that value here. And we come to minus 5 there. We put a minus sign before x, then we get a, a, a 5 there, which is absolute. Right. So the graph of this function becomes a graph which comes here, up to there, and they ignore this part of the function because it is only defined for less than 0. And also the red line will come up to that. So what we have here, what we see here is that this graph in general of an um, absolute value function will be looking like this, like a big V. So now we need to look at this um, um, if, uh, value of this function. In this case, when you look at it this way, we'll be looking at the function in this form whereby A will be equals to 1, h equals to 0, and the k equals to 0. And as you can see here, h is along the x uh, axis, and the k is along y. Actually, what we see on this point here, where this function is decreasing from the left up to there, and then there, there's a turning point. Point. The turning point, the coordinates of turning points are actually zero, zero. That's what we have there. So actually, this zero, zero here is actually the same thing as h comma k. In other words, what I'm trying to say is that when you see a absolute value function defined in a general way like this, what it simply means is that the turning point of this graph is at h k. That's what we have there. Then now we're going to look at this and see what, 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 does, what does this really mean. What we mean is um, now the turning point, as you can see here, is at 0, 0. So now let's try to look at this um, parent function carefully so that we can see what we, can, we should do with uh, this one. So in other words, here, the absolute value function, it has got a turning point when its argument x, its argument x is equals to 0. So then, if its argument x is equal to 0, then evaluating that function would say f at 0 to now find out the y coordinate, that will be equals to the absolute value of 0 that is going to be also 0 according to the definition of absolute value. So, in our words, we are saying the absolute value function, this basic function, it has got a turning point at 0, 0 when its argument is 0 and when evaluated at um, that 0, we also get 0. So, the the turning point is 0, 0, which gives us hk. So I want to see how can you use that in a general situation here. Let's start first of all by taking a equals to 1 and um, and the k equals to, to 0. And then the function will look as follows. It's going to be f of x equals to absolute value of um, x so we have been saying something about h let's say h in this case is equals to 1 so we say here minus 1 brackets plus k which is 0 now if we follow the same pattern that 
this function has its turning point when its argument x is equal to zero. We would pass that kind of behavior to this um, modification of function that this one also should behave exactly like this one. So this one will have a turning point when it's with um, the argument here, which is under absolute value, is equal to zero. So we say x minus one equals to zero. Then solving this equation, this tells us that x is equals to one. So the first coordinate of the point where there is a turning point is equals to one. Now calculating the the y coordinate, we would then say f at 1, which would be equals to absolute value of 1 minus 1, 1 for x, minus 1 given there, plus 0. So what you have here, we've got this equals to 0. So what is it telling us? Telling us that the turning point for this function will be now um, 1 comma 0. So then what would happen now here, it will mean that the turning point is at 1, which would, let's say, let's count here 2 squares to give us 1 unit, so the turning point will be somewhere there. Now, the next thing, what would be interested if we are plotting this function, is to know where the line would cut the, the y-axis. So, the line cuts the y-axis when y is when x is zero. So setting x equal to zero, x equals to zero. What would you do? We we'll come to this function it says f at x equals to the absolute value of for x minus one plus zero. That's how we define the function there. So what do you do? We substitute x by 0 there. So it would mean that, remember, f of x is the value y. So we'll say y is equals to absolute value of 0 minus 1, then plus 0. Then here we're going to get what? 1 plus 0, which is equals to 1. So the point of intersection on the y-axis is going to be 0, 1. Then we know that that is going to cut the y-axis there. One thing which we haven't mentioned, uh, which is very, very important, is that this graph as it is here, as we draw here, as you can see here, this graph is symmetric around the y-axis. In actually, is symmetric around the line x equals to 0, which is the first coordinate here. So in this case, if the turning point is this, we would expect this graph to be symmetric around the line x equals to 1. So we would have a line there, x equals to 1, running there. So then, if this graph here cuts the y-axis here, then we would draw this like that. And take into account the symmetry. You know, if we stop at any point like this, we've got the distance here equals to that. So instead of calculating the other value, once we've got this one, instead of calculating this other value, we'll just take transport this distance to this side. Then we know that the function will pass through there, then there we've got the graph of the function. What has happened compared to the original graph? The original graph was symmetric around y here. Now, given the function this way as f of x equals to x minus 1, the graph gets shifted by 1 to the right. So, what do you, what do you have here? What you have is the following. In other words, we've got the function here, the original parent function, which is y is equal to f of x equals to absolute value of x. And then if we take the function y equals to f at x equals to 
absolute value of x minus 1 and the absolute value, then we have got the following. The graph is initially here, then the graph gets shifted 1 to the right. So, in this case here, we're having our k being equals to 0. And again, we see the, the turning point is at 1, which is this unit here, and then comma, the level of y is 0, that is that. So, because of what we've just seen here, we're going to now interpret this interpret this minus sign here, that minus sign only. We're going to interpret it as an order which says shift by, you know, shift by or shift to. In this case, this let me use two. They say shift to one. You know, is now the graph, the, the turning point shifts to this point one there. So now I think we're not going to see exactly what this means before we see the next example. Now let's take this function as if it was y, a new function, basically a variation of the original one, a variation of f of x equal to absolute value of x. They say we get f of x equals to absolute value of x plus 2. Now, they say f is plus 2 plus 0 for our k. Now, we expect this function to behave exactly like the parent function, which has got a turning point when its argument here is equal to 0. So, what we're going to do here, we're going to say x plus 2 must be equal to 0 for this function to have its turning point. And then this symbol implies that x is equal to minus 2 by solving this equation. Now, if x equal to minus 2, now wanting the value of, of uh, y axis, we'll say now y is equal to f at minus 2, which will give us um, absolute value of minus 2 plus 2, reading this from here, plus 0. We can see what's going to get here. We're going to get the absolute value of 0, which is 0. 0 plus 0, that will be 0. Then this answer here is 0. Therefore, according to what we have seen before, this minus 2, comma, 0, will be the turning point of the new graph. In other words, if we have this graph here, let's say this graph was there. According to this, if we take this variation of it, then what we're going to have, we're going to have this graph moving one, two, like that. So then the the now coming back to this shifting idea here, shift to one, what would you say? We would write this function as follows y equals to absolute value of x plus 2 plus 0. But you see here we said minus sign was saying shift to 1. But you don't have a minus sign here. So what would you do? We would rewrite this thing as follows absolute value of x minus to mean shift to minus 2 brackets plus zero. So now we can read this as shift, shift to minus two. What actual shift? What actual shift is the line of symmetry? So the line of symmetry now is going to be there. In other words, saying if we're given a, 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 a absolute value function like this, the line of symmetry for it will always be equals to x equals to h because what we have here writing like the general equation what we have here would have this as one for a absolute value of x minus h which is minus two plus our k in this case k equals to zero that's what we do. So, in other words, what, what I've just shown you is to show you the effect of H, that H makes the, um, the graph move horizontally. H for horizontal shift. H for horizontal shift.
Okay, I hope that is clear. So now let's now do another variation of this kind of a function. Let's take the following. So in this general equation, y is equals to a absolute value of x minus h plus k. We've seen what h does. H moves the graph horizontally without altering anywhere, just shifts it horizontally. Let's see what happens with k. We're going to use this exact function here and then say in our case here we assume that h is equal to zero then we've got the, the line of symmetry here at, along the y-axis and the y-axis the equation is x equals to zero then what are we going to have here we're going now to have this as y equals to absolute value of x plus let's say one in this case here again we're taking our a as one we can call a the amplitude of the function we will see what what it does soon so what is going to happen here we're going to say in this case h is equal to zero which means the turning point is at zero when x is equal to zero then now to calculate the value of y where the function um, sorry where the function casts the y-axis will say in this case we are taking x equal to zero which is same thing as x so evaluating they will say y equals to y equals to f at zero which is going to be equal to the absolute value of zero there plus one and then this will give us zero plus one which is equals to one. So in our way, the turning point is going to be at zero, one. And if you look at the position of this one, it's the same one which is here, it is the same as, that is the value of k. So now what to say, the turning point has shifted to one from zero, zero. So the turning point is going to be somewhere there. In other words, the graph now is going to be there. If you check what has happened, this graph we just it will be just the same graph, just that is shifted upwards by one. The same thing would happen in the case that um, we have got the graph written as y equals to absolute value of x absolute value of x plus minus two which is the same as absolute value of x minus 2. Now if we do the same thing here, x will still be 0 like that. Now if we now get um, x being equal to 0, we've got a turning point. And then if we now want to evaluate y at 0, we would get absolute value of 0 plus minus 2 which will give us equals to minus 2. Then the point 0 minus 2 becomes the turning point, which means exactly the same graph is going to be taken down 1, 2. So then what we can see there, that's a vertical movement. So a K there, K there, represent what we call the vertical, vertical, Cal, cal for k vertical shift of the graph so then what you can see now what you can see now when you read this graph we must read it as follows when we see it, put the graph in this form we must read it as follows that the original graph we is going to move horizontal so much and the vertical so much so in that case using that you must be able to determine the equation of this um, if the graph is this in this position somewhere there what can we say then we say then let's just take our a to be equals to one again but what we can say here we can see that the turning point is what is x equals to one one comma and the y is equal to minus one then you get that 
minus 1. Then to write this equation, what we we'll say? We we'll say y equals 2. We we'll say that our a is 1. x minus 1. That's a shift to the right. Plus minus 1. Then we get this equation. The, the equation of this of this uh, absolute value function. So similarly, you can try to get the equation of that. So once you've done this, you have listened to this carefully, and you can manage what to say. You should be able to to determine the equation of this function at any position. One more thing which we need to to see is the following. Just check that if we uh, take the the original function, this one, if we write f at x is equal to minus absolute value of x, what will happen? Every positive value there is going to be taken in the in negative direction. So that would be, um, let's say, 1, 2. So right here, 1, 2, this point will be there. And then this side, 1, 2. And now at this point there, if we put a negative sign before it, it is going to come this side. Then the graph as such is going to flip and face downwards this way. So that's the effect of this A here. When it's negative, which means the graph is going to face down. In this case, I'm looking at it uh, when A is actually equals to 1. So mine 1 will give us this uh, this uh, graph cup up minus one will give us facing down. Now let's just see what's going to happen if we increase a to two. This is what's going to happen. If we have got f at x equals to two absolute value of x. Now let's just take one example here. Let's say we've got one here. Let's start at 0. At 0, absolute value of x is 0 times 2 is 0. So this point will be still on the graph. And when we come to 1, absolute value of 1, this would be f at 1, which would be 2, 1, then which means there, instead of value being here, the value is going to be there. If we take it at minus 1, it will be the same because this function is symmetric, so this will be the same as f at minus 1. So we take the absolute value of minus 1 here, which will give us 1 times 2. Then at minus 1, it is going to get, uh, come up up to there. So what happens? What happens basically, the graph rises faster and it narrows around the y-axis. So if we take negative 2 again, this graph is going to face down. So, what we've seen now here, we've seen what's the effect of A, that of H, horizontal shift, and that of K, which is a vertical shift. So, from there, I think we've mastered what is happening with this function. So, what we've seen in this presentation, in general is that we started by looking at a constant function for example this case here which we count um, in two units was one two then this function will be f of x equals to two now the blue line here it will be simple f of x equals two minus one as a constant function and I note that the y-axis the x-axis itself will be f of x equals to 0. Then after that, we looked at um, the general linear function, which is in this way. Then, like for example, this function is given the equation there, f was equal to that. And this one, remember, we said you can take two points and determine the gradients, then write the equation as simple, something as like ax plus B, where B will be the point at which the, the line casts the y-axis. So, for example, in this particular case here, 
would have this one cutting somewhere there which would be one two so in other words that line is going to be equal to a x plus two then taking any two points for example like this one which is one zero one zero and this one which is zero two zero two we can then calculate our a as um, two minus uh, two minus zero and zero minus one which will give us minus two showing that the line is going down so always when the line is going this way from left to right downwards then our a will be less than zero in the other direction there our a it will be greater than zero now in the function is increasing and the same lastly we came to the absolute value which is closely related to the linear function i hope you'll be able to to do the following what will follow next we're going to do some uh, few exercises on this as a tutorial otherwise at this point i would like to say thank you for listening my name is chance was